Hi, this is Andy from Orbit Media, and this video is going to show you how to combine AI, ChatGPT4's code interpreter, with Google Analytics, GA4, to find insights that will help you come up with ideas for better content by analyzing your existing content and showing its performance uh, based on things like the words used in the titles and based on like its performance in search and social. Uh, in just a few steps. I'm gonna walk through it all now. This is kind of fun because it combines tools that uh, maybe a lot of people haven't combined yet uh, using some new technology that um, is actually very accessible. Let's jump in. Okay, I'm here on Google Analytics. Uh, this is the just real-time report. Okay, the first thing I wanna do is to find the, uh, the pages and uh, see their relative performance uh, so I'm going to come in here to the engagement section and go to pages and screens. Uh, so it's going to start with just like the page location maybe as the default and there's like here are your metrics. The first thing I'm going to do is customize this to pick the metrics that I like. These are the metrics that I like best. Uh, so I click the pencil to customize and then I click the metrics download. Uh, I've turned off those charts because they're not super useful to us. And um, uh, I got users, sessions, engagement rate, average engagement time, views, don't really care, uh, session conversion rate I do like, conversions I like, bounce rate, great. So if there's anything here, maybe like session conversion rate that you don't see, just come down here and search for it and then you can click to add it. So this is how to get the data that we want to measure the performance of content, which generally we're talking about the kind of top of funnel metrics, middle of funnel metrics, and bottom of funnel metrics. I guess this would be kind of a middle of funnel thing. Okay, okay so then I click apply. And I click save three times because <laughs> that's how it works. Save, save, save. And then I wait for it to say change is saved and then I come back. Okay, I want to see, I want to give uh, uh, AI the data about the titles. So I'm going to right away switch this to the page title and screen name. And I also want to see the performance of these things in terms of their uh, traffic sources, which varies. So uh, I'm going to come in here and just choose the uh, traffic, the source medium, for example, or let's just take medium, session medium, and add it as a secondary dimension. What you just saw me do is to click a plus to add data from another report, right? Add, add another uh, dimension to this. Primary dimension is going to be my page title, and my secondary dimension is going to be just medium. Just big picture. Medium is the broad origin of traffic. Source is the specific origin of traffic. But this has got all kinds of stuff and not just blog posts. I'm really trying to do this for my content marketing. So I'm going to do one more thing to this report, which is to add a filter. Uh, the filter is going to show me just the pages for my content marketing content. So I'm going to include only when the page location contains the word blog. So instead of choosing a, checking a box, I'm just going to type in the blog and then choose all values containing blog. Apply. Okay. Now I am looking at the traffic perform at the performance of each article. Uh, it's based listed by page title uh, against its uh, in different mediums and against those metrics that we selected, which were um, you know engagement rate, average engagement time, session conversion rate, stuff like that. This is the data that I'm looking for, uh, and I'm going to now export this data. I've got my date range set to January one, so I've got uh, six months of data here. I think you'll need to, um, especially for low traffic sites, you want to go choose a longer date range. And I'm going to click to share this report download the file, and I'm going to grab it just as a CSV. It's now downloading the file. Uh, that file is sitting on my desktop. And for the next step, I'm going to import this into ChatGPT. Uh, the, the AI that I'm using is uh, GPT-4, and GPT-4 is the one you need if you want to use Code Interpreter, which is the, the version of, of uh, ChatGPT where you can upload files and have it do data analysis. This is for paid users. You got to spend the 20 bucks a month if you want to do this. So um, if you have done, if, if you are paying for it, you still need to turn it on. Currently at the time of this recording, it's uh, in the beta features. So down here by your name, click on the three dots. Uh, then we get the settings. And from the settings, go to beta features and then toggle that on code interpreter. Currently all paid users have access to code interpreter. They rolled it out slowly. I had to wait. I'm glad I have it now. So that, now we can choose GP4 as our large language model, but not just that, but Code Interpreter as our uh, model. So uh, the next thing I'm gonna do here is to upload, a, uh, upload the file, which is sitting on my desktop. I think it's just called Data Export. Click Upload, and it just put that whole file. 
Quick caveat, I'm uploading my own Google Analytics data right into an AI. I can never take that back. Is that against my company's policies? Am I doing this with my client data? Is my client okay with that? Uh, is this, is, uh, am I breaking someone's, you know, uh, the, the terms of an agreement that I have with somebody? Uh, am I training the next version of GPT? Is this gonna, is this gonna be in GPT-5 now? Uh, so be thoughtful, be deliberate, uh, and, and uh, be, be careful when you upload things to, to AI because uh, this is like a, you could never take that back out of the database. Okay, so I've uploaded the file and I'm gonna give it the prompt. My prompt sounds like this. I'm giving you a lot of Google Analytics data about traffic to a blog. It shows the performance of all the content marketing since January 1st. Can you answer questions about this data set? So I do this first, really just creating a prompt to see if it's able to analyze the data. So it's actually going to start working on that, crunching the numbers, looking at the data, and tell me if it can um, uh, understand what it finds. And it comes back and says basically, yes, like this data set includes the following columns. Um, it's interesting, Code Interpreter will actually show you its work. Uh, it's using, I think, Python code to try to understand this thing. Um, and then here's the data. It's good. Now it's asking me, um, now that we understand the structure of the data set, what specific questions would you like to answer? Great. Okay, my next prompt is going to be a little bit more detailed. Uh, I like to begin prompts by telling, in, by telling uh, AI who it is first. You are a data marketing analyst and what skills it has. You are an expert at making data-driven recommendations. Now, here's, the, here's my specific um, task. Combine the data from the columns to recommend new digital marketing topics that would likely have good traffic and engagement. Organize the topics into two groups, those who would perform well in search versus those who would perform well in social. So you get the idea. I gave it, remember that secondary dimension? I gave it data about search versus social performance, so it should be able to report that back to me. Okay, here's the answer, which is pretty fun. It says to make data-driven recommendations, it's gonna do it separately. It chose its own method. We're gonna do this separately on organic uh, uh, and social traffic. So for, for these traffic sources, they're gonna consider the following actions. Then it decides to filter the data set based on the session medium to see those separately. And it gives me the highest performing topics in both organic search and, and social media. This is looking at the data set and showing me what worked best in each channel based on its own weighting of, the, of all the metrics Fast analysis, nothing earth shattering yet, but that's interesting to me. One thing that really surprised me here is that it didn't just choose the titles, uh, but it made them into links. I did not give it the URLs. It says the actual URLs are inferred based on the title and not provided in the data set. It's showing things that I didn't give it. Uh, I am surprised by that uh, and generally pleased by that. Um, amazed, I guess. Now my next prompt is gonna give me even deeper insights because unlike search, which is only gonna retrieve information that exists, I'm gonna ask it to create brand new information to come up with brand new topics. So my next prompt sounds like this, you can see it here. Suggest 10 new topics that are not in this data set. Divide them into two groups, good for search and good for social. Cheerful little guy. Uh, sure, I'd be happy to suggest new topics for your content marketing, good for search. These are things that I had not written about. Um, these are some topics I hadn't covered. Uh, so this is uh, not bad ideas here already, good for search and good for social. Uh, generally pleased with what I'm seeing here. So if that didn't impress you and you didn't think that that was very useful, keep in mind, we only gave it a couple of prompts. The most insights that I get out of AI are when I go much deeper into the conversation and prompt it you know, five or 10 times. Uh, what I did in this conversation was actually to go much deeper. I asked it to make me a scatter plot chart, which I thought was interesting, but everything was crowded here around that, that one axis. So I asked it to make the chart a log scale chart, which it redrew showing content performance, engagement versus traffic. Uh, it was not able to make an interactive chart where I could click on the dots and I could see the article. So that's not really that useful to me. Uh, it, it explained why. Uh, then I asked it to find articles that did well in one channel, but not another. It inferred what doing, doing well and doing terribly was, and then gave me, a, um, and then gave me an answer. These are the ones that did great in, in social, but not as well in search, uh, showing me the data behind them. Then I asked it for the opposite, um, to, or then I asked it for more details to do the same analysis, but based on engagement and not traffic, which it did and did a pretty good job of. Uh, again, showing me the, regular, the relative engagement score for each of these articles. I also asked it which articles had uh, above average engagement, but below average traffic, uh, which it did in a, in, in a uh, which it did very quickly. That's a useful report because it shows you what you can keep promoting. These are things that are very engaging but haven't been seen by enough people. Uh, and then finally, just kept going deeper, uh, I asked it to create a brand new metric called awesomeness. 
and to blend traffic and engagement into one number and then show me the top five articles in terms of awesomeness, which it did, but I felt that these were um, a little bit heavily weighted uh, in a direction that I didn't like, so I asked it to change the awesomeness metric to reduce the weight on traffic and then do the analysis again, which it did. You can see it's showing its work, adjusting awesomeness, is, uh, and it gives me back a list of um, uh, the adjusted awesomeness score for these for a brand new metric that it just created and that I asked it to, to tweak. Um, th this is then I start to go deeper. I'm asking it questions about what do these have, what do these articles that did well, these outperformers uh, have in common in their titles. And it's telling me what common phrases appeared in there. It's telling, it's analyzing the length of these titles, which ones um, that the there's a correlation between use of numbers and performance in a title. It also shows the correlation between use of questions. Uh, it's loading Python toolkits to be able to come back and show me what the words that I use most often, uh, and the use of numbers is in their correlation. And then finally, uh, a fun prompt, uh, listen to this one. I just want to understand the differences in titles between articles that worked well in search and social. What prompts should I ask you that will be most likely to help me find those insights? And it gives me some prompts that I could ask to go deeper. So kind of fun, hopefully it's helpful. You can go into GA4 and export this data and then import into Code Interpreter and really just start to talk to your analytics data. Uh, give, it, give it both the page titles and the traffic source and then you can start to try to make correlations and find insights that way. Uh, ask it for things that don't exist in the data set, like to suggest new topics. Um, really fun to combine these new tools. Uh, be the first on your team to bring these insights to a meeting and uh, let that start a conversation. Um, and uh, see if you can let, uh, if AI can help you sharpen your focus on certain topics and iterate on your content strategy uh, for better results forever after. Again, Andy from Orbit Media, if you found this useful, feel free to pass it along to a friend. We'd be grateful, and we'll see you next time.